This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. I have been here. The Grey Goose. Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. For the sake of a memory of an old comrade, I indulged in a sentimental episode. And I wasn't too certain it didn't put a little idea into my friend Inspector Ford's mind. However, nothing transpired in that direction which threatened the exposure of the Grey Goose. Then came an evening when I had a nice little profitable affair in mind, so I buzzed Barbara. Barbara, shove the old bookcase and come in, will you? Hmm, all is silence. You there, Barbara? Strange, can't be out. Said she'd wait till I buzzed. Better shove a bookcase from my side and explore. Hmm, all in darkness. Barbara! Barbara! Obviously out. Well, let's have a bit of light on the subject. All tidy. Nothing amiss, apparently. Ah, wait on. A note. Rowley, see attached, have decided to keep appointment. A what appointment? Oh, wait on. Attached. What's the attached? Hmm. Agony column. Barbara Favisham, if you see this, news of Brian, to his advantage you meet friends, my hat friends, at coffee store below end of Westminster Bridge, 9 p.m. Thursday. Notice will appear each consecutive night for the same time and place. Well, I'm dashed. Thought you'd have more sense. Now what has she walked into? And how can I get to her? Just on nine now. I know. I'll get Charlie Austin to come along with me. Well, you know most of the story, Charlie. Barbara is on the trail of the members of a syndicate who left her father, Brian, to carry a baby that got him 12 years. Now, this message in the agony column of tonight's paper attracted her attention. And she's gone off to keep the appointment. My motto is never read the agony column. Never. There's too much agony. <laughs> You're probably right. The fact is, she's gone to meet whoever it is at nine o'clock. And it's now nearly half past. Running into danger, that's what. I'm certain of it. This may be a forlorn hope, but we'll try the coffee stall first. See if we can gather a clue there. I know our herb smithers, the bloke what owns the stall. Here, pull up. Here we are. Uh, reckon we could order a cup of coffee, eh? Right. We will. Uh, cup of the brown herb, and one for me friend. Watch your Charlie lad. Hey, on, two extra special. Ha, blimey, keeping swell company, eh? A friend of mine. Uh, this is Herb. Oh, glad to meet you, uh, uh, Herb. <clears throat> the coffee's fine. Busy tonight? Nah, not as yet. Between eleven and twelve's my best time when the swells are through with the pictures and theatres and such. Funny though. I did have a swell lady here and a gent about half an hour ago. A lady, eh? Uh, well-dressed? She wouldn't be no lady if she wasn't well-dressed. Now, would she, sir? Oh, I think you've got something there, Herb. Uh, did she uh, have a cup of coffee? She did, too. And a sandwich. Did her boyfriend eat a drink? No. He was high and mighty. He seemed in a hurry to get away. Said they'd got to get to Dorking in a hurry. Lady said Dorking could wait. Dorking? A bit of a long way at night. What was the lady like? Blonde, I suppose? No, sir. She was fairly dark. Mm. A bit on the tall side, too. Mm. Funny thing, you know. She asked me for one of them toothpicks. What? Toothpicks. I don't have them Chinese stick things, only them quill things, like in that glass over there. Well, she saw them in there, and she said she hadn't seen any in years. Oh. Then the lady took a dozen of the toothpicks and paid for them. And some, too. Well, Charlie, we'll be moving on, I think. Good night, Herb. The coffee was top hole. Thank you. You're welcome, I'm sure, sir. Clever girl, our Barbara. Saw a chance and took it. Get in the car, Charlie. 
Well, I ain't got it, Mr. Hicks. Haven't you? Look, Charlie, Barbara, to my mind, was not very impressed with the gentleman who met her at the coffee stall. That might be the idea. Check. She delays him by demanding a sandwich and coffee. Hoping you'd turn up, I suppose. Of course. But she can't stall forever. Suddenly, she sees those toothpicks. Old-fashioned quill ones. Crikey. Quills. Feathers. I get it. <laughs> Clever girl, as you say. This is how I think her mind works. She'd try to indicate which direction she was bound for. Now, would this bloke tell her? He probably would. But I'm convinced she wasn't feeling very comfortable and knowing, or at any rate surmising that I'd follow her, she tried to lay some sort of trail. Then, luckily, your friend Herb overheard the impatient one say docking. Uh, she wasn't to know Herb would mention that. In the ordinary way, no. But she'd realise I'd make some judicious inquiries, during which, in all probability, the name would come out. Oh, a lot of guessing. True, a lot of guessing. But a lot of possibilities. Why should she take a dozen of them quills? Markers, Charlie. Markers. If they stop anywhere, it's my belief we'll find a quill to guide us. Come on. Docking or bust. Stopping every likely place on the way. <laughs> Outside the 20 mile limit, Mr. Hex. <laughs> we'll be blotto. <laughs> that place hasn't had a car call since 7 o'clock. Another blank Charlie, no quills. Big Packard stopped for a can of water at this cottage, the bloke says. Where's the can? Just inside the gate. Fetch it, quick. Uh, here it is. Anything inside? Blimey, yes. A quill. Ah. First chance she had, apparently. Suppose they stopped here and didn't go on. By Joe, yes. Dorking might have been just a blind. We don't know for certain. Cast around, Charlie. Turn your torch. I've an idea if they've gone on from here, Barbara would do something about it. Leave some pointer. Mr. Hicks, here's another quill. Where? Ah, I see. Fixed in the wire of the gate. It's fixed and pointing on. I mean the points in the forward direction. It is, too. If we don't come across another, we'll carry on to Dorking. She's pretty thorough, isn't she? Ah, she certainly is. I wonder how she managed to dodge the bloke. Oh, easy. While he was getting the water, she'd fix that quill in the fence and she'd have a pretty good chance of dropping the quill in the can. All right. Come on, Charlie. On again. Well, we haven't passed a house or a pub on the road for some time, and we're getting very near docking. Oh, we can't go around the blooming place looking for toothpicks in the dark, can we? Certainly not. And if the place was paved with them, we couldn't see them. There's no dice in the dark, Charlie. Quills in Dorking, my hat. Ducks in Aylesbury, Tartans in Scotland, and Murphy's in Ireland. Yeah, pretty vague, I reckon. But I've got an idea, Mr. Hex. Oh, don't tell me. Look, this joker was driving a big bus. And big cars, as a rule, don't give trouble. Not them sort of jobs. Yes, I get that. Then, why does a car like that stop for water? You know that cottage we tried? Mm -hmm. One with the water can at the gate? Of course I do. Well, now what? I reckon that that there water was a clue. That car was giving a bit of trouble. Exhausting water, that's what. Otting up in a manner of speaking. By Jove, Charlie. There's a glimmer of sense in what you say. If that is so, the car's going to call in a garage somewhere around here for help. Charlie, you've had a brainstorm. If they stop at a garage, you think Barbara might plant a quill there. You've got the idea, Mr. X. Well, we can't do nothing there until daylight, can we? Uh, definitely not. Have to wait for the rest of the night in the pub. We can get into the Black Bull. I know the landlord. Incidentally, we are almost there. Good. I've had this scare in the night in search of squills. <laughs> Quills, Charlie. Right. In the morning, we'll make a house-to-house -house visit to every garage in the town. You take one way, and I'll take the other. Looking for squi... Uh, quills? Exactly. <laughs> Devilish difficult. But I'm certain Barbara will leave a pointer somewhere. And, as your idea suggested, it'll be a garage in all probability. All right, we'll hit the hay for now and see what the morning brings forth. Can't do a thing till then. Any luck, Mr. Hex? You mean quills, Charlie? Of course. This town of Dorking has more quills than a porcupine. There are feathered folk in every highway and byway, but none of them seem to be using toothpicks. So you won't run a particular toothpick to earth? <sighs> Not a sign. Well, I have. At a garage. Way out into the main street. My hat. How did you find it? By elimination. Last one I called at. Had a good look round, but nearly a quill could I see. 
Then the lad comes down and asks me what I want, see? So, to give myself another chance of a screw at the place, I ask him for a tin of lighter fluid. And then? Why, he goes up to the office to get it, and I follows. And there on the desk is a quill stuck through a bit of paper. I goes to grab it, but the bloke tells me hands off, it's private. Waiting for a certain caller. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, so I'll exit back here. Well done, Charlie. Come on, lead me to that garage and then disappear. Good morning. Fill her up, will you? Yes, sir. Um, I have an appointment in talking with a lady. She said she'd leave a message here for me where to find her. Oh, yes. <laughs> I unfortunately left town very late. The lady would be rather late too, I suppose. Yes, a driver woke me up at midnight. Fan belt trouble. Hmm. Uh, did the lady leave a message? Uh, she'd probably pin it together with a quill toothpick. Now, look here, there was a cab here earlier this morning. He saw that thing on the desk in the office. You any connection? Well, not to my knowledge. Uh, the message would be addressed to R.F. Well, this one ain't. No? Huh? That'll be 14 mob, mister, for the petrol. Right, there's a pound. Change in the office. All right, I'll come with you. Yeah, oh, no, you don't. You want to have a deck out that message? But it might be for me. You see, I knew about the quill. But the initials aren't RF. Well, <laughs> let me have another guess. Would they be GG? Crikey, you must be virgin. <laughs> OK, I'll bring it. GG it is. Hold on a moment. There you are. Thank you, son. You've done me a good turn. I'm seeing you later, I think. Um, by the way, did the lady seem worried? Oh, I reckon so. While the driver and I fixed the fan belt, she was sort of... Um, Pacing up and down, anxious like. I can imagine she was cursing me for being late. Well, thank you. I'll get along. Get it, Mr. Hex? Yes. Almost. Look. Just a scrap of paper, quill and all. Yeah. What's on the paper? Dean Hall. Must be the name of the house. But where the devil is Dean Hall? Come on, Charlie. On the trail again. <laughs> And so Roland Fletcher follows a very tenuous trail in search of Barbara Fabisham, whom he fears has taken a very dangerous risk. To follow the continuation of the trail, listen to the next episode of The Grey Goose. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.